Hi everyone, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering, analytics, and visualization with Alteryx and Spotfire. You can find my site at the URL shown on the screen. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the escape and map functions to create dynamic visualizations that update with changes to property controls. I'll also show you how you can use the same property controls in conjunction with data limiting expressions. So let's start out with the escape function. In simple terms, the escape function puts square brackets around a string so that Spotfire reads a string as a column name, just like what's shown on the screen. So here I have set up two property controls to work with. One is a list box property control called product LB, and the other is a dropdown property control called product DD. So to demonstrate, I'm gonna right click on my value axis and choose set from property. And this is going to connect my property control to the visualization. And under the covers, Spotfire is writing an expression with very specific syntax. So let me connect it to my list box. And then I'll go back and right click again, select custom expression, and we can see what that syntax is. And so the result of using set from property is that Spotfire adds in the dollar sign escape function. It works exactly the same way if I use the dropdown. So I'll remove what I placed on there. I'll choose set from property, and then I'll select my dropdown. It's going to update anytime I change it. And if we look at the expression, you'll see that Spotfire has inserted this dollar sign escape function. Now I'm taking a little bit of a shortcut here using set from property. I just want you to know what the escape function does because depending on which property control you're using, or the change you're trying to make, you may have to adjust it manually. Set from property might not give you exactly what you need, but now you know what the escape function does. So next, let's go take a look at the map function. Now, the purpose of the map function is to create a template into which multiple values can be passed and processed. This is handy whenever you're using property controls like the list box multi-select or the input multiple lines, where the user is making more than one selection. So you have to tell Spotfire what to do with each of those selections, and it has to know how to parse them out. Now, to begin, let's just look at the syntax for my top chart that has multiple columns already on the value axis. And I'll go to custom expression. And you'll see that the syntax here is simply the aggregation followed by the column, separated with a comma, and then again, the next aggregation and column. That's what we're going to try to replicate with our map function so that we can use property controls to choose what shows up on the axis. I'll go ahead and get rid of this chart because we don't need it anymore. And I'll take everything off, start with a clean slate. And again, to demonstrate, we will go to set from property. And in this case, it's called product LBM for list box multiple select. And I'll select that. And now you can see that what Spotfire has done is use the map function. And what Spotfire is doing is using the map function to create a template. It starts with the map function itself and then quotes. And within those quotes, you have the aggregation method. And then we are using the escape function to put square brackets around the selections that are coming in from the product LBM property control. The quotes will close. And then this part is actually my template. It's a quote, a comma, and then a quote so that the comma gets read as a string. And that's what's separating my two columns of data. And here you can see in the resulting expression, this is how Spotfire reads it. So if I click OK, now I can make multiple selections in my property control and the visualization will update accordingly. If you also want the user to be able to choose the aggregation method, you can simply replace the sum with a reference to uh, this property control here called aggregation DD. Now you can use this control to change and update the aggregation method on the chart. In this example, I used set from property in order to get the correct syntax and Spotfire put everything in there exactly as I needed it. However, for my next example, I want to show you a use case where you may have to really think about how to construct the template and how to use the map function because Spotfire won't always get it right for you. Let's go to the next page. In this page, I have created a list box multi-select property control called field LBM. 
and we're going to connect this property control to the data limiting. We're not going to touch a custom expression on the X or Y axis. So that's how this one is a little bit different. So before we get into the expression that's going to connect data limiting to my property control, let's take a look at what we would write if we were not connecting it to a property control. So if I wanted to look at specific fields, I would write an expression that looks something like this. Now, of course, this isn't dynamic and I have to essentially hard code in everything that I would want to limit to. But I'm showing you this so that you can see essentially what we're trying to replicate in our template. And we're going to need to put the word or in there as well as references to the field column. This is what that actual expression looks like. And you may notice that in this use case, the syntax differs a little bit from previous examples. We have single quotes placed in front of the dollar sign map function, and then the matching quote is at the very end of the expression. And you'll also see double quotes around the property control reference. And then I have a couple different quotes in here helping me out with my template. And so the easiest way to understand what each set of quotes are doing is to remove them and then read the resulting error or view the result in this expression dialog. And I'd also like to show you a little pro tip that I use all the time whenever I'm trying to understand how Spotfire is interpreting what I've put into it, is you can copy and paste an expression and go to your general tab to the description and paste the expression into the description field and it'll show you how Spotfire is reading it. So let's just see what happens if we start removing some of these quotes. If I take off this single quote around the map function, You'll notice that there is no longer the single quote that is needed in front of the first unique value, and it's also missing from the last one. So that needs to be in there. If I take these single or the double quotes that are bookending the property control, what's happening here is all of a sudden it's reading in the map function, which we definitely don't want. So that needs to go back in there. And then what we have in this section is a double quote and a single quote. And they're easier to see if you just space them out a little bit. So if I start taking those off, if I remove the double quotes, now you can see it's not reading any of the new unique values at all. So those need to go back in. And if I take out the single quote, you'll see that that removes the single quotes that's necessary at the end of each individual string. So now you know exactly what the quotes are used for and how to find out how Spotfire is reading and interpreting your expression. That wraps up this post. Now you know how to use the escape and map functions to get the most out of property controls and how to create truly dynamic analysis. If you enjoyed the content and found it useful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or share the link on LinkedIn. Thank you very much.